Where is the coldest place in the universe? You might be picturing a frozen world full of ice and snow, or a distant and completely empty patch of space far from any stars or galaxies. If you're picturing the latter, then you're right, or you would have been right until fairly recently. Now though, the coldest place in the entire universe is much, much closer to home. Between August 2009 and January 2012, the coldest spot in the entire universe was on this tiny spacecraft. Meet Planck, and while he may look like an unlikely record setter, there is good reason that we had to make him colder than any other object in the universe. Most of the time, the coldest place we know of in the universe is indeed a distant, frigid cloud in space. It's called the Boomerang Nebula. It's a planetary nebula, and it's absurdly chilly. A planetary nebula is a cloud of dust and gas left behind as dying stars blow off their layers as they die. Despite the name, it's got nothing to do with planets. The average temperature on planet Earth is about 15 degrees Celsius. The temperature of empty space is around minus 270.424 Celsius. And our record holder, the Boomerang Nebula, is minus 273. That's right, there is somewhere out there in space that is somehow colder than space itself. It's around 5,000 light years away from Earth in the constellation Centaurus, and it makes even the coldest places on Earth look positively tropical. The Boomerang Nebula is minus 272.15 degrees Celsius. That's minus 457 degrees Fahrenheit, or just about one degree above absolute zero. Absolute zero is the limit for cold temperatures. You see, temperature is a measurement of how fast atoms are moving and jiggling around. The faster they move, the hotter something is, and vice versa. Absolute zero is when all atomic movement stops and is the hard limit for cold temperatures. It actually seems to be pretty much impossible to actually reach absolute zero for a few reasons. Quantum mechanics might prevent it entirely by not really allowing atoms to be in one place. And it also seems like it would require an infinite amount of energy to reach absolute zero in a lab. But it's still the limit for coldness, even if we can never reach it. We even define a temperature scale based on this fact. It's called the Kelvin scale. Zero Kelvin is absolute zero, equivalent to minus 273.15 degrees Celsius. And then the scale goes up in ticks of Celsius. Even empty space isn't at absolute zero. The number I gave earlier, minus 270.4 degrees C, is about 2.73 Kelvin, so a few degrees above the limit. It never reaches this limit because of the cosmic microwave background. This radiation is often called the oldest light in the universe, or the afterglow of the Big Bang. The CMB, as we call it for short, deserves a whole video of its own, but it's light that was released about 300,000 years after the Big Bang. It was released everywhere in the universe at the same time, and as a result, it fills space almost perfectly uniformly. It was very hot and energetic when it was first released, but over the last 13.7 billion years, thanks to the expansion of the universe, this light has cooled down to become microwaves that are 2.73 Kelvin. Since this radiation is everywhere in space, that's how we know that empty space is also 2.73 Kelvin. And this tepid radiation is what stops empty space reaching absolute zero too. How then does the Boomerang Nebula, a natural place in the universe, become colder than this? The nebula is just one Kelvin, a single degree above absolute zero. So it seems like somehow it is actively cooling itself compared to space. In fact, this is the only known natural object that is cooler than the CMB, and some temperatures in the boomerang go down to just a few tenths above absolute zero, so it's very good cooling as well. The boomerang nebula has a dying red giant star at its core, and this is surrounded by the beautiful cloud of dust and gas that we can see in the image here. This envelope of gas is expanding incredibly fast, at over 160 kilometers per second, that's hundreds of times faster than a fighter jet, and is actually the reason the nebula is so cold. Lots of molecules moving fast and colliding would be a very hot environment. But as this cloud expands, the atoms lose energy. They don't collide very much and cool down very efficiently. This allows the boomerang to cool to the coldest natural temperature we've ever seen. 
at just one degree above absolute zero. This is more or less the same principle that fridges use to stay cold. But of course, this is on a vastly different scale. This is all well and good, but I've just made a big deal about this being the coldest natural place in the universe. In recent years, the coldest known temperature in the entire universe has been on the Earth. Different labs across the globe trade the record of coldest recorded temperature reasonably frequently. And as I'm recording this, the current record is 1 38 trillionth of a degree above absolute zero, or 38 picokelvin for all you prefix fans out there. That record was achieved at a lab in Germany in 2021. But for a while, the coldest place on the universe was man-made, but it wasn't on Earth. For a few years, from August 2009 until its coolant ran out in January 2012, the coldest place on the universe was the Planck satellite. It was actively cooled to just 0.1 degree above absolute zero. This is remarkable, and it had to be done for the Planck mission to achieve its goal. That goal was to measure the temperature of the cosmic microwave background that we've just been talking about. It's important to many areas of cosmology to know the temperature and how it fluctuates across the sky as well as possible. There had been missions before Planck to measure this, but Planck promised to do it better than ever before, resolving tiny fluctuations in the temperature. The satellite flew 1.5 million kilometers away, to the same patch of space that JWST now lives, in order to scan the entire sky and measure the CMB radiation more precisely than ever before. The thing is, we knew the CMB was just a few degrees above absolute zero, but we didn't know it exactly. So to measure temperatures that low and eradicate as much noise as possible, the satellite measuring it needs to be much, much colder than the CMB itself. We don't want any heat from the spacecraft overwhelming the measurements it's trying to make or leaking onto Planck's sensors. Planck measured very far infrared light, also known as microwaves, effectively a heat map of the universe. So if the satellite was hot too, it would cause a lot of issues with this measurement. Using both passive cooling and active cryocoolers containing liquid helium, Planck was cooled to minus 273.05 degrees Celsius, just 0.1 degrees above absolute zero. For this time, it was by far the coldest object in space, 10 times cooler than the Boomerang Nebula. No space telescope has been this cold since. JWST's coldest instrument is its mid-infrared instrument MIRI, which is about 7 Kelvin. So, relatively speaking, it's quite a lot warmer. Admittedly, that is still nowhere near as cold as these labs on Earth that keep getting colder and colder, or even as cold as the Cold Atom Lab on the International Space Station. But for an object that us humans popped into space, it's still remarkable. I also think it's just amazing to think that the coldest things ever in the universe are human-made, as there is no conceivable way a natural object could get anywhere near these temperatures. It's also fun to realize that the hottest things in the universe aren't galaxies, stars, or even supernovae, but also labs on Earth. The hottest and coldest places in the entire universe are both on our little planet, and that is pretty incredible. One caveat is that if you're willing to stretch your definition of temperature, then maybe black holes are even colder. They do emit Hawking radiation, which gives them a kind of temperature, but it's a bit of an extension to the usual definition of what we mean by temperature in everyday life. And I think it isn't really in the spirit of this discussion to include them here. Feel free to argue with me in the comments if you disagree though. Leave me any of those heated opinions or cool questions down there and consider subscribing if you're new to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. Until next time, stay cool team. I'll see you soon. Bye.